Hey guys, today I wanna to talk to you about something that's kind of fun, something that I've incorporated into our you know, daily vlogs as well as some other things, and that is transitions. Now, the awesome thing with vlogs that you, you really have freedom and you can do whatever you want, and so something that I've liked to kind of play around and experiment with has been different creative and fun transitions. And the awesome thing is, you know, these transitions are, they're easy to do, they're super helpful in you know, in building the story and especially transitioning between places or times or things like that. And uh, they're not, you know, you can do them in any editor or anything like that. They're really basic once you learn how to do them. So I wanted to go over four today. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do these transitions while talking about them. Now, I wouldn't use these transitions simply to go to a, you know, a new sentence or anything like that. But I wanna talk through them while I do them and to kind of show the difference. Like I said, again, I, I probably wouldn't use these uh, you know, to do in the way that I'm going to. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change shirts. So you know, in one part, I'll be wearing this red sweatshirt and in another, I'll have this gray shirt on. And that will kind of show you the transition. I'll also maybe change the locations and whatnot, but I'm gonna keep it all indoors so I can explain it. The first one is you know, just basically covering the lens, right? So a great one is by using your hand or hands um, to just cover the lens. So what you'll do for the first shot is you just wanna make the, the screen, basically your entire lens, you want it to be black. So you're just gonna cover it with your hands like this. And then for that second clip, you just uh, put your hands on the lens again, and you pull back and you're in a new location, wearing new clothes at a different time in the day or something like that. So that's one super easy transition. Now, one thing I would recommend with the hand transition or really whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be a hand, you can use anything to cover it. You just want that lens to be covered entirely. Um, I've used this to transition. Uh, I remember in one of the vlogs, I, I was up, uh, we were up super late. We just got back from a wedding, covered the lens late at night, kept the camera in the exact same spot. In the morning, I did the exact same thing and it was you know, a split second between day and night. Um, but, but one thing that I would recommend with this transition, whether you use your hands or anything else, is A, uh, take your lens hood off. Now I did this with the lens hood, so it might actually not be perfect, which is silly, I should have just done it correctly. So take your lens hood off but also make sure you're careful because once that lens hood does come off, you know, that's a great uh, way to protect the, the face and the glass of your lens. You don't wanna put, you know, a bunch of fingerprints on it if you can avoid it, or worse, you don't wanna scratch it with whatever you use, so be careful with that. Now the next transition that I wanna talk about, one that I've used a couple times, is uh, what I would call like a spin, right? And there's two different ways to actually do this. Now you can do it with or without an anchor point. And that's what, what I would call it. There's no you know official word for that, I'm sure. Um, so basically, if you do it with an anchor point, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the camera and I'm holding it and I kind of have it bent right now. I have it in like an L shape kind of, so the camera's pointing at me, but I have a good grip on my Joby Gorilla Pod. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna hold it really tight uh, just in case because sometimes this worries me a little bit. But I'm gonna take it just like this and I'm just gonna spin. And what I did for that second one is I just did my full spin one more time and then I bring this in editing and I'll do a, a little crossfade, just the smallest amount that I can do to transition between these two. And because what will happen is the, the background kind of blurs because you're just moving so fast. The cool thing with this is with that anchor point, which is myself in this one, um, is, is that I actually kind of stay in focus. So you need to make sure that you're holding it you know, about the same distance, about the same way, and about the same direction. And you just do that spin, you know, all the way around just like this, keeping as centered as you can. Obviously a lot faster than that. I actually like to go on one foot and it helps me spin a little bit faster. Um, but you can also do the spin a different way and that's without an anchor point. So what I would do is I would talk about, you know, something like this and then when I wanna transition, I'm gonna grab it. I'm actually, uh, I take my hand and I grab it from the back like this. I'm just gonna spin it uh, as far and as fast, kinda just right where it is, as fast around as you can. And for that second part, all I did was whip it around one more time. I probably only went 180 to 270 degrees. I did not do a full 360. So what I'll do is on the first one, I'll go, you know, a half circle or three fourths of a circle around. And then on the second one, I'll start, you know, back maybe at, at 90 degrees of where I started already. And I'll do that full three fourths to get back around to me. Now, uh, of course, be careful with this. My, my, my plate actually came loose on that one. It's loose right now, but it's still holding. Um, but the cool thing with this is that you don't have that anchor point. So nothing should really be in focus. And you can transition 
from a variety of environments you know obviously this was all in the same room in the exact same spot but if you you know if you can whip it fast enough uh it's just colored it's just blurred because of a rolling shutter basically will make it tilted and you're moving so fast the camera just can't keep up and things are out of focus and whatnot so you could transition you know from inside to outside and uh again i would do just a slight crossfade in between them uh super quick as quick as you can make it probably play around with it of course all right another one that i want to talk about is what i would call like a jump cut um so basically what you're doing is you're leaving the camera in one spot and uh you know, basically the subject. So the subject here is gonna be me, and I'm just gonna disappear uh, to something, right? So I'm gonna just go back here. I'll show you, because I'll change shirts and you'll know. But basically all you do is, uh, you know, whether, whether it's, you know, you close a door because you go in the bathroom and you take a shower or something, right? You want to get rid of that time in between. So you just uh, make sure your subject disappears by walking behind something or going behind a door or something like that. And then you just come back out or you open the door or something like that. And just like that, you're in new clothes. It's a different time of day, you know, what have you. So this transition is great, especially for passing time. And all you do is you take that entire clip on the timeline, or you can even start and stop it if you want. I don't, you know, I think it's easier to just let, let it roll. Maybe if you're doing something for a long time or whatnot, then of course stop it. But make sure your camera's in the exact same spot. You just cut out that middle. Uh, you know, basically right when I walk behind here, I'll cut. And then I'll cut to right when I can see myself again. And you make that transition go super fast. Um, one thing that I would recommend with this is you have to make sure your lighting is consistent. So I actually have had problems in this exact space. So I'm not sure why I did it here. I should have done it differently. Um, but with the changing light with the sun, which is uh, my kind of my key light here, right? There's a big window uh, door over here. Uh, so you want to make sure your white balance is not on auto because that can uh, fluctuate. So that's one big thing. Basically all your settings you want to be on manual, but of course you want to ideally have no change in light and that will make it more consistent, especially the longer span of time that you, you know, make that jump cut over. The last one that I want to talk about, I actually can't do, or maybe I could, but I, I couldn't do it and show it to you at the same time. Um, but basically what you'll do is you're, you're just tilting. So you're going to tilt down or you're going to tilt up and then you'll do the opposite. Now I've used this in, in other videos. Uh, when I'm filming myself, it's hard because you can't, uh, well actually, you know, maybe, maybe let's, let's try this actually. It's the wrong tripod to, to do this with. But if I take the camera here, gotta get sturdy. Sorry, it's a little wiggly. But if I take the camera and I just tilt it up and then I tilt it back down. Now I just did this transition taking my hat off because like I said, I, I'm not using the right tripod right now. Um, usually I, I'm gonna tighten this real quick so that I can keep talking. Perfect. And I'm gonna put my hat on because my hair is a mess. Usually what I'll do is I'll use this transition when I'm, when I'm shooting somebody else, right? So uh, what I would do is I would have um, let's see, where have I used this? I did a lip sync video for that camp I was just on. And so I had one, and this is actually fun, I had one person sing their line and then motion to hit the camera up. And when they, they didn't actually touch it, but as they motioned, I flipped it up to the sky and it was all blue. There were no clouds or anything like that. And then I went somewhere else. I took the camera, I put it up to the sky, made sure it was all solid blue so you couldn't tell the difference because that transition is, you know, it's key. You don't want to have one with no clouds and then all of a sudden there are clouds or what have you. Uh, and I just tilted back down fast. So it looked like hit up and came down. And it was a new person in a new place singing a new line of the song. A couple key things with this is that uh, you have to, like I said, you need to make sure that what you're panning up to or down to, or sorry, tilting up or down to, uh, stays consistent between the two clips. So you could do it simple where you just, like I did here, um, you know, I panned up and then I panned down and it was in the exact, I mean, I didn't move the camera, it was right, it stayed right where it was. Um, you know, and, and that's important for, you know, the ceiling, like you saw, had some, uh, some like tin tiles on it, right? Because if I moved the camera, it would look different. There's clearly lines that you could see that would have moved. Um, but if you do it on something like the sky, where it's either completely blown out or all blue 
or you know something like that, something that's consistent and easy to replicate, then you can move places as well, which is cool. Um, one other thing with that in replicating the the scene exactly is make sure you know what your settings were. You can also you know go into your camera and, and probably see the info on the clip you recorded because you want your settings to be exactly the same as well. As always, a you know a little um, cross dissolve could help in that transition if you're off a little bit. Um, usually the shorter the better, um, but hopefully uh, that helps. So those are kind of my four uh, basic creative transitions. And the nice thing with these is that they aren't, you know, it doesn't stop there. These are kind of like the base that you can build off of and get even more creative with. Um, there are also other fun transitions, of course, um, I might do another video. This was kind of a quick thing. I just I just wanted to talk about it because it's something I've been playing with lately, something that I've enjoyed a lot. And I'm certainly not the first person to figure this out, uh, but I think it's fun to share about it, about something that I'm interested in. So hopefully this helped you, um, you know, with your vlogs or professional work or anything really, it can be it can be used anywhere, which is awesome. If you like this video, I'd love for you to subscribe below and keep up to date with our daily vlogs, business tips, and gear reviews. Thanks.